Would so, you respect and submit to your man, the guy, mm-hmm. let's hypothetically, if you're in a relationship mm-hmm. or married to a man, would you respect him and submit to him just like you would submit and respect to your respect your boss? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. First of all, like when I asked you, would you be my girlfriend? Before answering, like I would like to take my time and think or even dating. And if I say yes, when you ask me if I be your girlfriend, I'm not just saying yes to be your girlfriend. It's like I'm saying yes. I'm surrendering myself because I'm opening my mind, body, soul to you. I'm mm. submitting mm. myself to you. Where's she from you. again? Bing Jing? <laughs> God dang. Yo. Baton, baton. baton. Oh, okay. But yeah. she yeah. said she surrendered to her love, man. I love that answer. Uh, that like, was a good word. Hey, Sonia, I have a question. Because the level of trust <laughs> and faith I'm mm-hmm. putting into you, is mm-hmm. I'm submitting you, like I'm surrendering myself to you. I'm saying yes to that. Because I believe you're going to be there no matter what. I have that unwavery. I'm sorry mm. if my English is not understandable. Unwavery trust yeah. in him. In you, that's why I'm saying yes. So, of course, 100% I will surrender and submit to you. Hey, Sunga, do you know your ring size? <laughs> Come on. This guy is simping over here with the lovey eyes. No <laughs> comments on that. <laughs> Slipping in your pimping, though. No, my bad, like my bad. Move your mic a little bit. Okay, good answer. That was a great answer. Cause, yeah, because I don't think like we just... We will like, you know, like, agree to be someone's girlfriend, like some, just like randomly. Mm-hmm. Like, I personally don't do that. I've been single for seven years, and I'm definitely not gonna s- go and like say, yes, I'll be your girlfriend. Yes, I'll be your girlfriend. Yes, I'll be. I'm not gonna do that if I, if I say yes. I'm curious of the culture and Tan. Um, Bhutan. Okay, yeah, I'm <laughs> the chat. I'm just bad with all names, human names, names of places, <laughs> names name. of anything. I'm, I, I suck at it. I'm good at the feet in this in a logical area, but when it comes to names, I'm trash. Okay, so but what's the culture? Do they have like, are there any like strip clubs or gentleman clubs out there or no? No. There's no oh, gentleman clubs out there. No. The now, yes. like when you're out there and you want to go on the internet, can you go to corn sites like P O R N where they show nudity? I th- I think we can, but to be like, I swear on God, I have never watched porn. I have never did that. And I don't think it's common in my country. It's not common. Yeah, but I have seen it. Okay. And I know about it. Got so it. So I guess, yes, we can do that. Okay. But so you- it's not so common and open and it's like something like people do out there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, he ain't got no strip clubs out there. So, no wonder why she's speaking how she's speaking. Sure. Can I ask? So, earlier when I was answering about submitting ourselves to our men, yes. you asked me whether I have strip club in my country. Mm-hmm. Why did you ask that? Is there any connection? So, yeah. what I've learned is theology, like religion, informed culture. And then the culture inform politics and the society, the rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. So it was the belief in God and the religion and the rules and the guidelines that you have in religion, a higher moral standard. Mm -hmm. And then that applies to the culture. So the culture was more moral. Right. Mm -hmm. And then our rules and our laws and policies was more moral. But now with America, it doesn't go like that. Culture dictates everything. No one looks at theology anymore. Culture dictates it all, and the culture is degenerate, right? So then we have the culture informs now the politics. Now we have all of these rules and regulations and policies that don't make sense because it doesn't follow theology. You get what I'm saying? So that's why I asked, and here we got strip clubs and all of that because— We have a culture that doesn't follow any religion. (laughs) But where you're from, you have a culture that follows religion. You have a higher moral standard. This is why you don't allow strip clubs. This is why you said you never even seen corn and stuff like that. So that's why I asked the question. Make sense? Thank you so much. You're welcome. What about carrying your tradition? Tradition? Yeah. Man, our tradition is like Santa Claus, Easter Bunny. <laughs> Saying is that I'm um, like there are countries that follow traditions 
you know, to the core compared to others. And ours what, isn't that. Yeah, and ours just and isn't that. And one of the reasons why is because we are uh, a nation mm -hmm. that allows immigrants in. So since we allow immigrants in, say if we wanted Christianity, mm -hmm. like I would say that America was kind of built off some type of Christian values, right? And then we allowed immigrants coming in and they have different, you know, religion beliefs mm -hmm. and culture. Mm -hmm. So you're mixing all of these different cultures. Then this is why living in America, no one even knows their neighbor's name. No one even trusts their neighbor. Like if something happens, it's like, well, I can rely on Billy right across the street to help me out if I can't pay my rent or to watch my dog or something like that. We don't really have this tight knit culture mm -hmm. that's based off of theology and things like that a higher moral standard but like where you're from i'm sure you knew your neighbor's name right and yeah. you probably knew all of them and yeah. you can trust your neighbor yeah right and if you couldn't trust your neighbor you will probably move right out here it doesn't work like that <laughs> one thing i like about america is like they're very inclusive and then when we come to America, they are not like we, our country, like for my country, mm -hmm. like we Bhutanese follow. So in America, for example, if it's Christianity, when we come here, they're not saying like you have to follow Christianity because now you are in America yeah. and you have and to follow that's Christianity. Because, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I see you that's, like the freedom of America. Well, and that's because currently America is secular, meaning that it's religion and the state is separated. Mm -hmm. So this is why when you come here, you feel a sense of freedom. Uh, but the sense of freedom that you feel comes with pros and it comes with cons. Mm -hmm. I would say for you being a, a, a newbie here, I'm, I'm sure you're soaking in all the pros because it's like, oh, I can I have the opportunity to do this and the opportunity to do that. But when you do get married and you start having a family, mm -hmm. you come from a culture that is, like you said, your woman, the woman in your culture cooks for the father, mm -hmm. cooks for all the men in the household. They surrender to their man, not just submit, they surrender to their man. Now, say if you have kids and everything and then your daughter is growing up, there's no one around really that has any masculinity that you would even want your daughter to be with. Mm -hmm. For your son. Well, God dang, who your son going to, you know, choose? So as you stay here, you'll see that long term, it's a lot of flaws. Short term, yes, it's a whole lot of pros. Okay. I, yeah, from from how I see it, of course, I'm very new. But from how I see it, it's like, from where I see it, it's, it's I feel America is... You know very inclusive they uh -huh. they are like they allow all the immigrants yes and they they don't try to like impose their culture or their tradition or their religion on us america so it seems like like they're not really trying to impose they're not really mm -hmm. trying to influence mm -hmm. the people it comes differently though I always say that influence is the most powerful force because influence creates how you think, you know, it forms a perspective and that creates your actions. So with that being said, we have LGBTQ, we have trans, well, that's transgenderism and everything. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, the, this victim mindset that can be instilled in people, which takes away the, the accountability and that drive, that assertiveness that people have. So there's all of these indirect influences that does impose on people, um, but it's not anything that's like very direct. So mm -hmm. it's not you're not going to feel like, well, yeah, you shouldn't be wearing that. Or, well, yeah, at, or, or these days we pray at this time of day or, well, yeah, you can't, you know, do this and, you know, do that. It's kind of free and everything seems great but it's a whole lot of degeneracy mm -hmm. yeah, it's a whole lot of things that leads people astray but it's very indirect like even in <laughs> cartoons disney they'll just throw a man and a man kiss and you're like god dang this was a cool cartoon hello kitty or whatever the cartoon is a uh, cocoa melon 
got two dudes kissing and stuff. Like, what's going on there? So they'll throw that in. You got now you got a, you married out here, and then you got a little son. Now your little son, you you out there cooking for your man. Mm -hmm. But then you look over, you peep the TV. It's like, wait, is that a man hugging on another man, and that's the child? And they have a like, hmm, why, why are they showing that though? Mm -hmm. Right. So everything is very indirect to impose to because influence these people out here, the people that run the world, they're smart. They know that influence is the most powerful force mm -hmm. and they'll do things very indirectly to get to your mind. Overall, America is the best country. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah. No, that's... Overall, it is the best country, but those are just some cons. But yeah, I mean, listen, if you want to, this is the the land of the free, the home of the brave. And if you want to make some money, this is the place to be. Mm -hmm. So you come here, you can assert yourself. And really, like you said, you're a hustler. You can go ahead and get to the bag. But money isn't everything. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can get the money. But while you're in here and soaking everything up, you can be soaking up a whole lot of garbage too. Mm -hmm. Things that can warp, warp your mind and, and, and indoctrinate you. That's what I'll say. But it's also like even if I didn't come to America mm -hmm. for say like I lived in India and I could choose any other country and live there. So I think as long as you are spiritually, you know, well aware of yourself, you know who you are, you have that moral values and your standards and yeah. you believe in yourself, no matter where you go, what you see, what influence you get. I think it's always it's always like good to go and see and get the influence and then take the ones you can, you know, like benefit in your own way and shape it how it's benefit and take that and leave cuz I'm in America and I see a lot of things and every single day I get to learn a lot. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there are pros and cons everywhere. I do feel sad sometimes. I'm happy, I'm learning, and also I'm seeing so many things which I don't want to learn to. Yeah, that you don't want to see. But it's like, yeah. but I cannot just close my eyes and start my day. Yeah. And I cannot just ignore and, it and go away. Yep, and that's what I'm, I'm saying. It's, it's long term. Your mind is less susceptible to outside influences than other people because came from a culture that protected you. So you built up some calluses on your hands so you could deal with some stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But your kids, say when you have kids, they didn't build up the calluses on their hands from your good culture, your high moral culture like you did. They're going to be raised in a culture where it's just like they're seeing crazy things they're after your kids is what I'm trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you're in your 20s. You know, you're older. You're less susceptible to outside influences like kids. And then you're also coming from a country that has a higher moral standard than America. So that means that oh, you'll be fine. You could, like you said, ah, I see it, but you, I block it out. You could block out the negative influences. Mm -hmm. But as you have kids and your kids have kids, it's going to be harder for them yeah. to block out the negative influences. Mm -hmm. Even if you're yeah, still instilling it. your culture and your traditions in your kids, you can still instill that in, but they're still seeing all of the de uh, degeneracy in America. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. So it's kind of a long-term thing, not short-term. Uh, to America. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you said you were the home of the, home of the free, the land of the brave, <laughs> yeah. the land of opportunity. I, you gonna I, get some I, deep pics. Yeah, right. I didn't <laughs> respond or react out there, mm -hmm. but one thing I wanna address out here is like, yeah. Yes, I am a girl and I have a cleavage. And it's it's natural for girls to have a cleavage. And then for you for your understanding it's not just cleavage if you can see it from a very respectful place or a you know right. view if it's you can do that it's not just a cleavage. It's also called bazoom. It's the place where you shove your head, suck it and become a man. And you still do it when you feel low or horny or whatever. Now, bazoom. Bazoom, that means they have like self-control. The safest, you're like how your mama hugs you. Oh, okay. And you keep, you put your head to her chest. Oh, that's, that's what that is. That's bazoom. 
that's the safest place in the world if you can see it in a very respectful way. I don't know how you see it. Oh, of course, my claim is just there. I see what you're saying. So you're saying that men out here, they see the cleavage not in a respectful way. In your culture, they see it as bazoom, meaning that that's the comfort. I cannot that's say a, that's in the my good place. Yeah, I'm saying if, truly. if you place. can see it in a very respectful way. You saw my cleavage and you commented it. I didn't react. Yeah. But you are constantly DMing me, and that's disrespect. Got and you. I'm, I see I'm, what you're saying. I'm urging you guys not to do it. I'm a girl. I have a cleavage. And I would like to dress up in certain way I feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm allowed to do it. So you said some good stuff there. Mm -hmm. And that's actually some game. You said that, I love it. well, you know, I'm a woman and, mm -hmm. you know, that's cleavage. It's natural for a woman to have cleavage. Mm -hmm. You said that in my culture, it's bazoom. It's a respectable thing. Men don't look at it sexually, mm -hmm. but out here, men look at it sexually. So I should be able to show cleavage without men mm -hmm. viewing it as sexually. That's what you're saying, right? No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. Like even in my culture, I'm sure in my country as well, like people from my country also do watch my Instagram, TikTok and everything. And they, they, they obviously still see, see the cleavage my sexually cleavage too? too. And they make comments as oh, well. They all I, make comments. I see that. Oh, okay. But I'm just urging them to see it in a, you know, it's okay. Respect. It's okay. My picture is out there in like internet to world to see it. You're allowed to make a comment. I'm not reacting. Let it. me ask you a question but real please quick, Sung Sung Do not DM me time and again <laughs> about my cleavage. I know it. Real quick question for you, Sungay. Okay. If you see a man mm -hmm. with a Lamborghini, mm -hmm. you know, he got pictures with a Lambo, big old mansion, nice place. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you could just kind of see the money on him. Like he's wealthy. He's okay. high status, right? Do you think that women aren't going to see a future with that man? Do you think that women are going to excuse the fact that they can mm -hmm. see a bright future with a man like that? They automatically will see that man and they would see a bright future with that man, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, because that's just natural because you want a protector and a provider, mm -hmm. right? It's like in your nature. It's embedded in you. And the other thing, a man's nature, the thing that's embedded in us is, well, we like sexuality, mm -hmm. right? So when a woman displays cleavage, I'm not one of those type of men. I'm not a boob guy. I don't care how much cleavage you got. You could be full titties out. God dang it. Don't do nothing for me. <laughs> but anyways, back to my story. <laughs> On the other hand, guys, when they see that cleavage and stuff like that, they're going to have a sexual response it's natural mm -hmm. for them to have a sexual response mm -hmm. when they see cleavage just like it's natural for a woman to have a natural response when they see a man that can provide them a future so i would say the onus is not on the man to make a change mm -hmm. the onus is on the woman to make a change no i accept that and i also accept that you are making comments and I accept the fact that you see it and you, of course, what you are saying, it's 100% true. You want it to but be respectful. I have, but I'm urging you guys <coughs> at least not to DM time and again. Mm. Hey, she don't want no more D-pics. That's, that's what, what I'm you're saying. saying. Like, right, please. Cool. Well, hold on. I would like to say something. <laughs> so, okay, so hold on. So you said that, you know, guys would say, oh, why a girl like you is single, you know, for X amount of years? You know, because most men... You know, they look for women conservative who dress like you're dressing right now, which I think you look great, who don't show cleavage and who are submissive to their man and want to cater to their man and be respectful and believe in God. Because, you know, majority of women in America dress the opposite of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So us U.S., that's why there's a... We have guys, they call them passport brothers. Passport brothers are guys that go to other countries to look for wives. <laughs> so it's, good, it's a compliment when they say a woman like you. They're really giving you a compliment yeah. because you have respect for yourself. You dress conservatively. You don't show cleavage because the majority of American women show cleavage. They have their ass out. You know what I'm saying? They don't really cater to men. They don't really respect men. You know, but, you know, a woman like from your culture, they respect men. They cater to men. They don't have cleavage out. They dress nice like you do. So when, when a, a guy in the U.S. sees a woman like that, 
you know what I mean? That's what we want. That's what we look for. So mm -hmm. that's why there's a group of guys in the U.S. that go to other countries to look for wife. Mm -hmm. because, because we don't have that in our country. Or we do, just not a lot. Mm -hmm. So when they say, you know, a woman like you, they're really just giving you a compliment. Can I say yeah. something? Yeah, that's, I, I, yeah, she was speaking towards a, a different part, though. The right. men that's actually, you yeah. know, degrading her right, and right. seeing her just as a object, like lusting after her. That's why I said, well, hey, the onus would be on you to know the nature of the man. Since mm -hmm. men fall in love with their eyes, they are sexual creatures, mm -hmm. then maybe you want to not show the cleavage. Like you're dressing now, very no, conservative. Like, you are allowed to make comments because my picture is out there, mm -hmm. the internet. For the world to see, you're allowed to make a comments. I'm not reacting on it. I'm just urging you guys not to DM me time and again with all the pictures or whatever. I'm not interested. And what you just mentioned, like passport brothers from America, they're looking for conservative women and all. Okay, I get that. But if all the men from America are like the ones who are all these pictures, if those are the ones who are looking for the like, conservative wife, the passport bro, if those are the ones, I don't think the conservative women going to like you. No matter how girls oh, are dressing not. up, if you're going to comment on them like this, it shows what kind of respect or what kind of <coughs> vision you have it for women. Yeah, and well, we it shows not, that the dating marketplace is all messed up, right? And we and will not feel safe to submit ourselves to you. Understand what we'll say is that the dating marketplace is all messed up is all in the majority of the woman's hands and then a, since a small percent of the power is in the top tier men well i would say really the majority of the overall power is in the men is because the top tier men all the want the top tier men but overall the general population women kind of run a dating market and that's because most men pander to women and they, you know, are thirsty for women. So it goes like this. <laughs> First time you get something for free, mm -hmm. it creates appreciation. Second yeah. time you get something for free, it creates anticipation. The third time you get something for free, it creates expectation. <laughs> the fourth time you get something for free, it creates entitlement. By the fifth time you get something for free, it creates dependency, mm -hmm. right? And by the sixth time you get something for free, you don't even, uh, you resent it. You don't even want it anymore. It creates, starts to create depression and anxiety. It creates full dependency. Like you can't live without it. So I would say that most women, they kind of hover around that entitlement field. So since women get all of this free attention from guys because guys are thirsty, what it does in a woman's mind, they get so much free attention from men. So they look at it as like, ill. like that's gross. Like, why are you hitting me up? Right? Like you're doing wow. too much. It's degrading. But let's peel back the layer. Just the first guy you ever got a compliment from, even if it was a compliment like, dang, baby, you look good in that dress. You would appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But you get so much free attention by men and so many compliments like you just stated. So many guys hopping in your DMs and commenting on your pictures and sending you dick pics. You like, God dang, I don't want this anymore. This is too much. You guys are gross. You need to control your sexuality. That's because you get so much free attention. The dating marketplace is all messed up, right? You got all of these men out here that lack the ability to convey themselves and approach women mm -hmm. through online dating. They don't even know how to talk to women. They don't really know how to talk to a woman and convey themselves. They have no riz. Mm -hmm. So these guys just do anything and they thirst over women and they always take an L. That's what I would say. So if you like that clip and you want to watch more, click right here. But if you want to watch the full episode, click right here.